We are back here at Staples Center remembering Kobe Bryant. Now joining us, Brian Shaw, who won three titles with Kobe. Matt Barnes, rival turned friend of Kobe, <laughs> played with him for two years. Before we get into a discussion with these two, a little breaking news for you. Mark Spears of the Undefeated reporting that in the All-Star game, Team LeBron is going to wear the number two for Gianna, all the players, wow. and that Team Giannis will wear the number 24, of That's course, great. for Kobe Bryant. So a lot of us have been hoping that those numbers would get some play in the All-Star game, and they're going to be there on Sunday. That is very, very special. Brian, look, people think that you became teammates with Kobe and got to know him around 1999. That's not true. <laughs> when did you first meet Kobe Bryant? I first met him in 1989 uh, playing in Italy against his father. Wow. And, uh, you know, he was a 10, 11-year-old kid running around on the court, uh, getting in everybody's way, challenging everybody uh, to play one-on-one -on -one and play horse. And uh, so that's how far back it goes. I'm shocked to hear that he was getting into everything. <laughs> I, I can't, can't believe that. And he obviously trying to emulate all of you guys. I remember uh, hearing stories about that but when he was in high school even you had, had a conversation with him where he what he forecast his NBA future yeah we we went to the finals uh, in 94 95 season with Orlando he was a big fan of Penny Hardaway and and uh, Jelly Bean brought him to one of the games and he was a junior in high school and he said next year I'm going to be playing against you mm. and I was like you know he had grown to be my height yeah um, but I hadn't seen him in a while. He was a skinny kid. Wait, this was when he was a junior, by the way, not junior. even a senior. And on top of that, he said, you know, I even thought about foregoing my senior year of high school, uh, which, uh, <laughs> which has come, never been done. Come get you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> come you, huh? <laughs> yeah, so. And at the time, you're like, yeah, whatever, kid. <laughs> yep. And then, you know, next year I saw the, the press conference where he, you know, said he was foregoing uh, college and, and going to enter an M NBA draft. And I was like, wow, he told me that a year ago right. that he was going to be doing that. And now he is. I love the story of you and how you and Kobe became close and you became teammates with him because mm -hmm. what everyone really associates you with Kobe yeah. is that flinch moment, yeah. right? When you yeah. were rivals and the trash you talked yeah. against each other. People are still mad at me about that. You know what I mean? Like I'm seeing it on social media, like, you know, so-and-so F you, he didn't flinch. I'm just like, <laughs> and if you would just listen to the, the, the whole situation and understand. But it, like I said, it was, it, we were just super competitive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was, uh, you know, we had much mutual respect for each other. But then, like I said, after that situation went down, you know, I was talking to Miami Heat and Pat Riley about joining LeBron, D Wade, and, and, and them, and then Kobe hits me. You know what I mean? So it's like, man, do I go to Miami with this super team, or do I come home and play with Kobe and play with my favorite team? And and that's when we, I came home, and you know, we became brothers from there. You guys were very close when you guys played together. Can you explain? To be a teammate of Kobe Bryant and hear all the time in practice, in text messages, anything else, just that competitiveness always, even about situations, it shouldn't be like that, right? Well, I think we saw two completely different Kobe's. You know, he got him at the very beginning, sure. you know, and I got him after, you know, he had been seasoned a little bit, so... Yeah, I, I had number eight, and you had number 24. <laughs> right. All right, well, let's right. start with eight, because he was <laughs> right. the warrior. Well, yeah. eight was raw, but the one thing that was consistent about him was his preparation. Mm -hmm. And especially when he knew that he was going to be playing against the guys who were supposed to be, you know, his competition as the best players in the league, whether it be LeBron, D. Wade, Melo, whoever at that time, he would come to the, to the uh, film room and say, I want every touch from each one of these guys, mm -hmm. and I'm getting ready to play two weeks before we would play them. Really? To prepare for them and everything that he would need to that, that he would need to do, and um, and so to me, that's what stuck with me: his preparation, his discipline to you know to his craft. Um, and when it came down, he was a consummate pro in every aspect of it. And so you hear people talk about his his. Uh, demeanor on the court, his competitiveness, but it started with the preparation. And he, he believed that if you prepare over and over and, and, and give yourself a lot of repetitions, there's never a situation that's too big for you because you've prepared for it and you've done it so many times already. One thing that always struck me about him in covering him was that he really didn't believe in giving anyone mercy. No. Especially, <laughs> if, you know, you would think most guys, oh, I'm on, he, no. he's a younger kid or I'm on his team no. or any of that. And to him, not doing that was about, hey, you got to raise him. your standards. Teaching I'm not, not going to give you a pass yeah, here. Yeah, no, we had a situation out in Santa Barbara at his basketball camp where I'm coming back off my, I tore my meniscus with them the first year. We're coming back the second year um, after Phil left. And I'm out there. He's like, all right, we got to play two on two. I'm like, well, shh, man, I'm all right. I'm not really knowing what I'm getting into. And, and we're going out there, and he is backing down kids, blocking shots, dunking on them, blocking their shots. And I'm kind of just sitting back, kind of watching, like, 
this is this is playoff <laughs> mode Kobe, right? And these kids are little, like falling down, didn't care, I was, like I no was mercy. There, I was there too. Okay. There, was, there was a kid that they called the White Mamba. Yeah, yeah. he challenged him. <laughs> oh, that was a mistake. Yeah. That was a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, "You good?" He's like, "Man, <laughs> this is him like this. no." He, he said a few explicit, but like they're not. They're basically, he's saying nothing easy here. I don't care how old you are. Yeah, absolutely. Can you tell the shark story, please? Yeah, so we had training camp in Santa Barbara, and everybody knows I love to fish. Yes. So he said he wanted to come fishing with me. I called him about 6 o'clock in the morning. I went down to the beach. Uh, he didn't end up coming. Okay. So I caught some sharks and some stingrays right from the, right from the bank, and I took pictures of them, and then I texted them to him, and I said, look, see what you missed this morning? And he texted back and said, what did you do with them? And I said, I just took a picture with him and I threw him back in the water. And he, and he said to me, why did you do that? And I said, well, what was I supposed to do? He said, you were supposed to kill him. They got caught. That's their fault, you know, so you're supposed to kill him. But that was that was his mentality. It didn't matter. He priced those sharks pay. <laughs> That's right. You, be you, killed. You, you took the wrong bait, you got caught, now you got to pay the price. And, and Matt, you saw him, as you said, more, more toward the second half and in some unguarded moments as he was dealing with things yeah. in his life and dealing with, you know, look, he was the most dominant player in the league for a while and then yeah. having to phase out and get older like the rest of yeah. us do. How did you see him handle that as a team? Uh, well, you know what I mean? Because obviously it's 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 all mental for him his mental toughness is, is second to none you know so we were both going through a lot of personal stuff and he actually got a little condo at the top of the Ritz right across the street um, and we used to take these tunnels underneath and not even and go right up to the uh, right up to his room hang out you know drink have a couple of drinks and then decide we're gonna go dinner or what we're gonna do that night and it was just really uh, like you said a uh, unfiltered vulnerable time for both of us and we and that's when we leaned on each other you know we like I said we talked about life we talked about our relationships we talked about kids we talked about life after um you know, he was just a regular, a regular dude when you got a chance to get him to open up. Yeah, and look, the thing about Kobe is he always was curious. He always wanted to learn more. And that's something I think we don't talk about enough. When someone thinks they're as good as Kobe Bryant thought he was, a lot of those kinds of people, they don't hear anything from anyone right. else, right? They don't think they can learn anything more. The way I do it is the good way to do it. But he was always asking questions and always introspective yes. and especially yeah. in transition moments yeah. of his life. I just think, you know, obviously later on, you know what I mean? Because you hear so many different things about it, the younger Kobe. You know, like I said, I didn't get a chance to know I, I was a fan of that player I got a chance to know the older guy and, and along the way it's it's what's best for everybody yep. you know what I mean it wasn't so much about him anymore although he was still the focal point it's about what's best and what it, what, it, what is it going to take to bring these guys together to get me another championship yeah absolutely well thank you both Matt we'll see you a little bit later in the show Brian thank you so much for being with us Thanks sharing those me. memories for I'm picturing 10 sure. year old Kobe running around you guys <laughs> that is really really amazing